All right. Nine, I'm gonna, no, I'm gonna have ten to years ago. Continue, continue. Okay. All right, so entering. Ten years ago. I don't care. <laughs> entering the light is one of the oldest songs or ideas that made this record. It's uh, a piece of music that Frank had put on a, a personal album that he had worked on a few years ago, and Jamie and I really always loved this song. Um, it's almost it's it's less of a song, more of like a uh, like a film score composition in itself. It really uses uh, some very different elements from what are present in other places on the record and is this uh, really interesting kind of palette cleanser. It, uh, it kind of draws you in in this very sweeping way and has uh, these really beautiful um, elements of like uh, choir voices, dulcimer. We actually got this really, really awesome um, uh, Hammer Dulcimer Prodigy Max ZT on the record uh, to perform on that song um, and it, it really is just a beautiful contrast to the rest of the record um, that we really we felt we needed something a little different um, to kind of switch up the flow and uh, Jamie and I fought pretty hard for it and eventually Frank uh, kind of relented and Acquiesced. we got our way <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, the song uh, I had written probably, like, when I was, like, 16, I guess. And it was probably, like, one of the better songs I had written at the time. I really, like, uh, was obsessed with the movie The Gladiator and uh, Hans Zimmer and Lisa Gerrard's uh, score to that was uh, kind of a game changer for me. And this kind of emotional, multi-timbral, sweeping sound, I was like, I have to get into this. And I started playing around with random instruments within reason. Uh, not within reason, but the program reason. <laughs> and uh, the song came together, like, pretty, like, easily. Um, and it kind of embodied at the time my uh, yearning for many things um, as a not confident, uh, scared, anxious teenager. Instead of uh, going to Hot Topic, I wrote uh, these sad, kind of sweeping movie soundtrack-like songs. And the song kind of like carried a legacy throughout time. Uh, and Jamie and Ben had always talked about the song since I had written it and I brought it back on uh, my senior thesis project in, um, in college and then, then they wanted a third time. So uh, <laughs> with real orchestra and real dulcimer yeah, this with, time. Yeah, with real instruments the way it was intended to be. I mean, I wanted it, you know, when I first wrote the song, I, I saw the orchestra playing it. and mob mentality we worked with with Yuri Sazanov of the Moscow Studio Symphony Orchestra so Frank and I uh, flew to Moscow for for several days and for a two-day session over those two songs and we had been in Sweden right, so when we a, went over to so this was a we weren't just flying right, from Connecticut this is a one and a half hour flight and um, it was a four like four hours okay this was a four <laughs> hour flight and uh, and um, and yeah, uh, the Moscow Studio Symphony Orchestra was, was great to work with, and Yuri is somebody who has a lot of orchestral producing experience, but also has a soft spot in his heart for rock music, especially rock music that has a bit of a progressive bent to it. And I think as far as entering the light as a piece, it, by 
generally lacking rock band instrumentation. Uh, it provides such a needed color on the album for its as a break from just the onslaught of heavy guitars and you know very uh, active drums <laughs> and and I think it really is a it's a palate cleanser but it's an emotional palate cleanser as far as it, it's just a different side of still expressing these same types of emotions. So you're thinking after this well, I don't know. It back. depends on it's if they idea. can even get louder than yeah. what they're already capable of doing. I mean, another option is you still have this shape and you make it mezzo forte, forte, and fortissimo. Yeah. Another option is you start forte, build the fortissimo, and as you said, kind of drop down again, hairpin it back. Well, up. let's ask. What, okay. what do you think the best? As far as like my world mu music, like Yanni influence, uh, I. Don't use, I guess, these instruments because, like, I think it's like, oh, like, let me exploit this culture, or like, <laughs> I'm like the white guy trying to, like, use, like, these cultures instruments and repurpose them for something different. No, it's not about that for me. It's about, like, every culture has made beautiful instruments and they should be shared. And I believe that, like, every instrument has a story to tell and the way in which that story can be told uh, is unique with each instrument and I find beauty in combining these instruments to uh, express what I'm feeling in myself. I can't, if I feel like the hammered dulcimer, I mean even though that's uh, kind of like a product of everything from like the Middle East through you know Ireland and Celtic music and stuff. Um, it's uh, it speaks to what I was feeling at the time, and it's timbre. I thought appropriately set up the vibe I wanted it to, and yeah, it's not about all that other stuff. It's about the music and our emotions as people, and I think uh, it's important to not hold back on what you want to use just because it's someone else made it, or you know. It's not within your immediate reach.